Hi all, this is Sean from Time and Talk. So today's video, I just made a making a quick off the cuff video, is about Rolex and watch shopping more generally. So, um, there's been quite a few videos recently that I've seen that like I, I will never buy another Rolex and all that sort of thing. So I, I thought I would weigh in slightly on that, and <laughs> if anyone cares, and um, also the idea of watch shopping because I've been in London, and I just thought it was quite interesting that. In a way, I've kind of no longer got the desire to, to go over to a jeweler's window and, uh, and look at watches. That's not because I don't like watches. I, I still love watches and uh, and things like that. But it's just because there's nothing more to see, kind of, in in, in a way. So, so yeah. So, in, in terms of the Rolex question, um, there's been a couple of videos that I've seen that have been saying, you know, I won't buy a Rolex anymore and here's why. And I, I kind of see why people are like that because... You know, you're either on a waiting list or, you know, you find it really difficult to, to, to buy them. And there's that absolutely ridiculous thing where you look in the jeweler's window and it says these watches are for exhibition purposes only. You know, in other words, you can't buy them. You can look at them. Um, and I was in a jeweler recently and I, I was like, why do you have them if, if, if people can't buy them? And they said, oh, you can try them on to see if you, you might want to get on a waiting list but even though the waiting lists are closed in some instances and it was it's really I find it really a strange thing I get it because luxury goods they're supposed to be scarce and if everybody could buy one then it wouldn't be luxurious and all that sort of thing but it just seems just seems really silly it, it really does um particularly with that these are for exhibition purposes only that I just don't don't understand the point at all um, so now, I mean, like I said, I was in London and motorbike going by there. I was in London, I was looking in the shop windows and, um, you know, same old GMT Master and Submariner and Air King, even though you know now that you can't buy them, even though they started displaying them. Um, I personally would still buy a Rolex and I would still buy one in the future I don't think I'm gonna have the means to buy any more in the future because the prices have gone up a lot since I bought my one and only Rolex um, but I still would buy one and, and the reason is because well there's, there's a few reasons actually first of all you can't really go wrong buying a Rolex because as we all know it's obvious that they retain their value and in most cases they actually go up in value over time and the fact that you're going to get a watch that's going to be really desirable if you can get it at retail or second hand um close to retail you're gonna never lose any money you're probably going to gain money over time and you can sell it even if you decide you don't want it you know it's it's kind of a no-brainer really if you if you like rolex watches because unlike other brands um omega Cartier etc you know they don't lose money um tag um so that's that's the first thing the second thing is that you know <laughs> Rolex is kind of like the byword in, in in luxury watches and most people who want a luxury watch want to own a Rolex and most people don't know about the higher end um luxury watches like Patek and Vacheron Constantin and, and things like that um so that's that's something else that you know it's 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 one of those goals if you like in 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 life that the that people want but i think in terms of rolex no other maker makes such timeless watches that can work kind of for any age and they'll never go out of style because you know they've always <laughs> looked pretty much the same as, as they are and um that's not really going to change drastically over time so that's that's another reason why you know for example, if you would have bought a, a Tag Formula One in the 90s, now those watches look ridiculous. They look like toys. I love them <laughs> because they're really interesting, but they look like toys now. Uh, a Rolex in the 90s is pretty much going to look the same and you can be safe wearing it. And, you know, it's probably going to be worth much, much, much more than you paid for it. And, you know, it, it, it's brilliant in that sense. So, um, trying to think if there's, any, if there's anything else in terms of other reasons. I mean, no, I mean, I kind of, I love Rolex in one sense and I kind of dislike, I, I can't stand jewelers, I hate going in them, I, I find it awkward um, and I find the whole 
waiting list thing and, and people who have got to have spent loads of money in the jeweler before they can access a, a Rolex is being a little bit elitist, which I get because it's a luxury product, but I don't kind of like that thing in general in, in my life, but you know, I understand it in, in, in terms of watches. And the second thing, I mean, tell me what you think about Rolex. Would you buy more? Are you kind of tired of it? Um, or is it just, I mean, for me, it's just something you've got to put up with if you like these sorts of things. And secondly, in terms of watch shopping. So I was in London and I didn't I didn't really do much kind of watch shopping in terms of looking around um, at all the stores. But I saw a few things. I mean, I was in the Burlington Arcade and looked at the Vintage Watch Company shop and looked at jewelers as, as I walked past them and inevitably went in the swatch shop about four times um and I just I just find it like less interesting than I used to kind of looking at particularly new watches um and the main reason why is because it's all becoming a little bit a little bit kind of the Rolex thing is spreading to to other brands so there was a in Covent Garden there was a a Tudor boutique opening and you know they started with the whole is it is it the Ranger which for a time after it was released that, that had the for exhibition purposes only because people people wanted it and it was a desirable watch because I think with the new Pelagos um, and it was kind of the same brands the same models in the shop windows which you get you know but I don't know new watches kind of interest me less than they used to disregarding more affordable brands I guess which is kind of a bit of an eye-opener for me because I'm, I'm a bit of a brand junkie I really I really like kind of expensive brands and, and things like that I always have done I'm, I'm not really sure why um, and another thing one thing that really really annoyed me is the the swatch moon swatch you know I went in the swatch shop and they've got the suitcase with all of the moon swatches out and Basically, every every second person was going in to, to ask the assistant, well, have you got any moon swatches today? Have you got any moon swatches today? And it was no. And it's like, surely the whole point of releasing a collaboration between a cheap brand and an expensive brand is that the, the people can access the expensive brand, but that's not happened. It's 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 been people who are a bit savvy about the watch industry and can, can buy the, the moon swatches and... It seems silly and, and and a shame that and you know they're going on eBay for for X amount over over retail. You can get them on eBay for like a hundred pound over retail, but that's something that kind of bothers me a little bit. You know, I'd like I'd like a moon swatch. I'd buy one if 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 I saw one in the shop. But I'm not going to go through a whole lot. I'm I'm not going to jump through a whole lot of hoops to 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 do so. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, swatch. I absolutely love. Um, wearing a, a swatch at the moment. But I don't, I don't get that collaboration. Um, I don't understand what the point is of it if Swatch fans cannot buy it, which is the majority of people who buy that watch will be people who like Omega rather than people who like Swatch. In, in my opinion, perhaps I'm wrong on that and tell me what you think. Okay, so a um, bit of a ranty video, I guess, so I apologise for that. <laughs> but yeah, tell me what you think about, about watch shopping. In future, what I'm going to probably concentrate on a little bit more is more affordable watches and maybe vintage watches and and older watches because i love looking in kind of watch shops that have vintage watches because you, you're always surprised by what you're going to see but it feels that in in boutiques now and in ad's all you see is the same watches which is a little bit boring really um and more affordable watches i've been seeing a few um affordable watches for example i'll put a picture up on the screen of an accurist watch that popped up on my Instagram feed and I thought that's cool it's a bit of an alternative to maybe an AP or a Vacheron or something like that for somebody who doesn't want to spend that much money or can't afford those watches because they're mega expensive very very few people can anyway thanks very much for watching if you like the video please subscribe to the channel thanks very much bye